Well, it's pretty hard to find anybody willing to come to Elliot Spitzer's defense right now, but is that really fair? Spitzer did take on Wall Street at a time when a little law and order was necessary. Does he deserve at least some credit for this? Our Fox panel is here to debate that point, including Peter Schiff, author of Crash Proof, Terry Keenan from Fox News, Gary Kalpbaum from GaryK.com, and Victoria Barrett from Forbes. Good to see you all. Terry, first to you if I can. Even those who praise him say or praise what he did on Wall Street say that his style was wanting, that he, he very often would skirt sort of usual methods that prosecutors are expected to take in order to go after his prey. He was a steamroller. That's what he what he called himself, you know, but Wall Street isn't a tea party and I give him a lot of credit for what he did. He went after a lot of the abuses in research and what was going on in the IPO markets where essentially IPO shares were being given out to CFOs and there's this whole daisy chain. Initial public he, offerings he, that he uh, offerings. needed some uh, little regulation was, there. He, he cleaned up the New York Stock Exchange, and believe me, you could talk to hundreds of members of the New York Stock Exchange who were essentially ripped off by the management there, who would thank Elliot Spitzer for what he did. Now, his personal peccadilloes came back to haunt him. I have a feeling that some of his enemies were out there looking for them, but you know, we may, we may never know that. Gary Kalpom, uh, let me bring up this uh, analyst situation that Terry referenced, and there were a lot of shareholders and a lot of people who were clients of, say, Merrill Lynch who listened to the research that Henry Blodgett, the analyst of the dot-coms at the time, was giving out. Spitzer discovered that that analyst uh, research was completely tainted. Basically, he was saying that things were better than they were just so that the companies would give their investment banking research to Merrill Lynch. Do you see any good out of what Spitzer got, and is it all a race now after what happened yesterday? Well, look, I think everything he's ever done in the past that was good goes by the wayside now just because this is going to stay in the headlines. But I give him a lot of praise for what he did. I talked about it on my radio show for many a time. Guys like Henry Blodgett with uh, strong buy recommendations and then emailing friends saying this stock is a piece of crap. Uh, so he did a lot of good. He opened up a lot of things for people to look at. The one thing he obviously didn't get done is these funds that are margined up 20 to 1, lenders lending out money 20 to 1 on margin. I wish he would have done something on that, and we wouldn't be in this position right now. But I think he did a real good job. Bad form, a little bit too over the top, but I think he looked at a lot of things that needed to be changed. Well, just Victoria, just to be specific about what, what kinds of things he did, uh, he was interested in changing the structure of AIG, the big insurance company. He went after uh, Hank Greenberg, who was the CEO, was anxious to get him out of that top position. He went back to a 30-year-old story that suggested that somebody was playing around with a private foundation with which Mr. Greenberg was associated. Not being specific, but suggesting, putting out the notion in the press, and you know how yeah. hungry we are for news, that <laughs> perhaps he did something wrong. It wasn't true. He hadn't done anything wrong. In fact, Hank Greenberg has given hundreds of millions of dollars over the years to a lot of oh, foundations, yeah. but there was just enough stuff out there to make Greenberg worry, and eventually he stepped down. Yeah, he stepped down largely because he had to. What what uh, Spitzer could do was basically hold boards of large companies up for ransom and say, look, if you don't settle, what's going to happen? We're going to press criminal charges. You're not going to your credit rating is going to fall through the floor. And guess what? If your insurance, that's not a good in, in the insurance yeah. industry. That's not a good thing. He went after the money. Uh, what's less clear to me. Is, is how much good he did in terms of reforming Wall Street. He certainly instilled a lot of uh, fear into the place, and it's a place that's pretty long on greed and, and, less, and a little right. short on fear. But what's the lasting good that he's done? And, well, I, I mean, could if say, he was in, Peter, you could say that he separated investment banking from the analyst research side, could you not, at many financials? Well, look, look, he was definitely on the right track. I don't think he went far enough in what they were doing. I mean, look at what's happened with the subprime mortgages. I mean, it, it shows that there's a lot more conflict on interest on Wall Street than even he was able to uncover. But, you know, unfortunately, when you're in a position of power, when you're a governor, you know, especially how he came to office, I mean, other than the sheer hypocrisy of, of what he's done, you need to put yourself on a higher standard. You can't Absolutely. do stuff that puts you in a position, what if somebody had found out about this? What if they blackmailed him? What might he have done? And 
you know, this is what they found out. They busted them on this. Who knows what else the guy's been doing? So, you know, you really can't do that when you're, when you're, when you're in charge of the public funds, when you control the purse strings and you're in the legislature. A, you really got to put yourself up on a higher price. Terry, prosecutorial yeah. excess is something we've seen a lot of recently, not just in the world of finance, but also in criminal law as well. Mm -hmm. And it is something that one has to be very careful about monitoring in our, our society. It is. And in most cases, Elliot Spitzer did get his man. He was able to make the case or to settle. But you're right. Always settled. They, he never brought a case in the court in front of a jury. He always settled before because he'd, he'd throw these little tasty bits of information out there for us in the press to get hold of. But in lots of cases, he was on the right track. On the right track, but again, prosecutorial excess, I just wonder. Well, you know what? He did settle a lot of these cases. People are scared. I think they didn't want to take, mm. go to trial with but him. But you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think anybody's learned the lesson from him. As we move away from that, I still remember New York Stock Exchange, how the board of directors were like uh, Dick Rasso's uh, you know, bridge buddies. And I think the same thing's happening now in a lot of places. Okay. I think that's got to be changed down the road. All right, thanks to our panel on that. In the blink of an eye, just like that, Spitzer looks a lot less like Elliot Ness and a little more like Al Capone. And that's because it was the tax man who ultimately brought both men down. We're going to talk about that investigation with one who knows taxes very well. That's next on Fox Business.